Hi. Wingnut here. Wingnut, yes. Going along in um, very slowly in um, very heavy traffic. Um, I'm driving back from being at work for a few days, um, making beautiful glassware with um, my fantastic team of glass makers that I work with sometimes, which is really good because um, it's the first time in a long while that I've managed to go to work and basically have do some work and then go home without suffering any consequences or suffering any Herxheimer's or anything like that, which is really good because when, uh, I forgot I had the hat on then, when, um, yeah, my dad always said, don't trust people who drive cars wearing a hat. I was back in the 60s he said that, but uh, I think it, it still sticks. <laughs> so I better take my hat off. Anyway, zero carb versus lime. I've been doing it for six months now. I've been zero carb for six months. And, um, you know... When you when you have Lyme disease, people, um, you know, when you do have Lyme disease, and you know those times when you anything seems uh, um, too much, anything like you know, making a cup of tea is just too much sometimes, like you know, yeah, anything, and when you lie down, you sort of like feel like you should have been lying down for all day and when you do manage to lie down you probably about three or four o'clock in the afternoon when you struggle through the day try to do you've realized you've achieved absolutely nothing and you've just been sort of like going around in ever decreasing spirals all day long you lie down and you think oh god i should have been here all day you know those days when you've got lyme's disease when you feel like that and to outwardly you look absolutely normal but um Inwardly, you just can't do anything. Yeah. And I understand that, yeah, because I've had limes for ten years, and I've tried everything. I mean, I'm, I'm what? Have you, I mean, I'm sure if you've got Lyme disease and you're watching this, you've tried everything, because you do. You know, because let's face it, the um, doctors. You end up giving up with the doctors because, like that. I mean, to be quite honest, I gave up with antibiotics because it was just not working. You know, it might have been working. It might, it, you know, on paper it could work, but the I don't know the cost of it, physically, etc. It's just too uh, too painful to do. So I ended up six months ago. I've got a whole series of videos. I ended up desperately going on a zero carb diet because I'd, I'd heard people saying that it's very good for autoimmune diseases, it's very good for um, a lot of infections and a lot of diseases, they reckon it really does work. Now six months in, I've just sort of like hit a milestone there because I managed to go to work. And come back, and to be quite honest, I feel you know, I feel positive enough that nothing seems like a problem. You know, I've got to be very careful. I don't sort of like take on too many, um, too many or too much stuff. Like you know, because uh, you know, when you feel like this, you feel like oh, okay, I'm invincible. I can do everything. Like you know, but I never thought I'd feel this well again. Six months ago, I was in a terrible state, and I'd never felt I feel this much well again. I was sort of like zombie. It was almost like um, zombie. When I see zombie movies now and everything like that, I think all those—they've only got Lyme's disease, those people. Because as it turns you into a bloody zombie, you know, and. Um, So, the zero carb thing, I mean, it's radical, it's not difficult, I can't say it's difficult because it's ever so easy because all you've got to do is eat meat, and only meat really, you can eat fish, and eggs, or 
meat, I eat fish and eggs and meat. And things like liver and things like um, black pudding. Black, black, black pudding. Lots of black pudding. And I do have a few mushrooms as well. That's my diet from start to finish. I drink mainly water. Um, I do have a cup of coffee in the morning. And I like coffee, I can't help it. I know it's wrong, but I like coffee. And in the morning it's lovely. And uh, tea. I do like a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, but the food, make food preparation is easy. You don't actually, to be quite honest, I've sort of like stopped having meals. Like meal, you know, like standard meal times. Because, um... I can, I can, I, my, the only meal I have is about seven o'clock in the morning when I'm, is it, when I've been well and thing, I get up and I cook myself something like black pudding, bacon, sausages, egg, and mushrooms. And I eat that, that's delicious, have a cup of coffee, and I get on with my day. Now I don't normally get hungry till two or three o'clock in the afternoon after that, or I don't feel I can eat, you know, because your appetite's not the same when you're um, on zero carb. It's um, it's uh, basically um, you don't get those hunger pangs, you know, you don't you don't get the sugar fl you don't get the sugar cravings and things like that. They all go completely. So you just notice that you could. You're hungry. It's not painful. It's not that you're hungry. So, and what I tend to do is um, cook a joint of beef or something like that, and just take slices off. Uh, and you can take them with you. You can take, and you can eat them. And it's like it's great. Absolutely great. You do. I do find I eat a lot of fat nowadays. Um, I'm eating more and more fat because um, it's basically uh, your energy. That's where your energy comes from, the fat. Yeah. And to believe you me, I like I didn't dislike fat particularly before, but oh, I, I, I absolutely crave and love it now. It's absolutely delicious and it tastes almost sweet to me now. And um, It's just sort of like um, it's it's a good energy source. Like, so it's just a change, and it, it it does change it. It does. You you can't just suddenly start eating meat and everything change immediately. It's, I was ill for ten years, and six months into a zero carb diet, I'm feeling stronger than I felt in ten years. Since Lyme's disease got me. I'm, f I, I'm having periods where I feel stronger than I've felt in all that time. I do have periods where I feel quite rough as well, because, let's be honest, I've had this disease for 10 years. And it's, you know, it's, it's been in me for 10 years, so it's going to take a bit of time to get, get it out. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that I, I'm winning the battle. Which is one one of the greater things you know it, it can give you is the, the feeling that you've got a chance you are winning the battle because there's nothing worse than no matter what you do and what you try you feel like you're losing the battle that's the most devastating thing you know soul destroying thing you can do feel like but it does happen with Lyme's disease and I see it in people's posts on on um, the Lyme disease websites and everything like that. I do see that. But all I'm saying is it sounds completely berserk and it sounds completely mental, but it works. For me, this is the only thing that's worked. And it's the only thing that's given me hope, you know, which is an awful big thing to say about in, in Lyme disease, like, you know, right? Because chucking pills at it chucking everything else like that doesn't work you know I do rife still yeah 
I do use my rife machine still, but now I'm feeling better. I feel I can use my rife machines more creatively. Right, you know, so that's interesting. But that's my, you know, that's my. I'm not sort of saying, you know, I advocate. Um, I talk. I do actually, you know, advocate for um, Spooky Two rife machines because that's the ones I got. You know, and I advocate them. You know. Because they have been, they, they could call it, the one of the way you judge is anything's doing anything, because they can cause an almighty hurt. If you, before when I was really quite rough, they could really, really, they could really sort of like turn, turn it on, like, you know, so I had to be very careful with those. So, yeah, like if you took a, if you took an antibiotic, you've got fucking, excuse my language, you've got a terrible hurt, you know. Put the rifle machines on a kill program for the bottom. You, you got to hurt, but, you know. So, but the only way of reducing your toxic load is by eating, and it's not by eating, not by becoming vegan. You know, the, it's the worst thing you can do if you've got Lyme disease. Become vegan, honestly. You've got to get rid of dairy, you know? and one of the the best things about this diet is actually about two and a half, three months in, my leaky gut disappeared. And I'd been living with it for years. And I didn't realise, you know, it, it, when things become normality, like, you know, and it's a, a struggle. And uh, the leaky gut just went, and oh God, my bowels, my everything, my digestive system and everything, it's never been so good. In years, you know, it doesn't. It's not an. Exp it's not the cheapest way of eating. It's not the most expensive way of eating. There are ways around it because you sort of go for the fattier cuts. You can go for the cheaper cuts because it's the fat you're after. You get. You're getting the protein. You're getting a very very high protein diet. You need the fats. You just no carbs. No carbs whatsoever. And uh, it's amazing. No, su oh yeah, no supplements. Stop all supplements. But the only supplements I have been taking now and again is fish oil. Just a bit of fish oil. Yeah, but that's the only, you know, no sort of ginkgo or all the other ones. I can't remember the millions of them. I used, to, I used to have a rack of bloody supplements I take every day. None of that. Stop all of that. Drink, drink water. Eat meat, fish, eggs, offal, and mushrooms, and away you go. I've stopped eating, I used to eat a lot of nuts as well when I first started, because nuts are, are um, low, low, zero carb sort of thing, but um, they don't want to be eating nuts, so they got arginine and stuff in them, which sort of like is not good for the leaky gut thing, like you know. So that's a good thing. thing. Although I was still eating nuts when my leaky gut healed up, so it's an awful lot. I don't know exactly what, how the mechanics of it, how it works, but I've stopped eating nuts. Um, not for the fact of any medical thing or anything like that. It's just I can't be bothered. I don't need to. I don't need to see yeah, it because I snack. I have one meal in the day, and the rest of the day I graze. Um, well, not graze, but um, I graze on meat. Yeah. But if you've got Lyme's disease and you haven't, and you're at the end of your tether, and you and you're willing to try anything, I did. I I, I sincerely say this is possibly the only way that you can get home. Yeah. Good luck. And I hope today is a better day than it was yesterday. And it keeps going like that for you, okay? Because I know there's a lot of bloody sort of like people out there who are struggling and it's, it's difficult. Because you think there's no escape. It's like you're being in a maze and you can't find your way out of it. Yeah? But there is hope. Peace.